Hi there, Steve Arterburn here, and we're going to go deeper into post-traumatic stress disorder. We've been uh, doing some teaching off of this series where we have eight books, Understanding and Loving a Person with a Problem, and today, Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder. Often misunderstood. Uh, many times this was just relegated to people that were in the military and um, and kind of, uh, you know, hear a gunshot and, and they would be triggered back into it. But it's so much more uh, than that. This issue, this, this, is a, this is a trauma. It's a result of a trauma or a terrifying event. And uh, you either experience the event or you witness it. You know, I had two, when I was really young, uh, I watched an ambulance get hit and a woman that was in the back of the ambulance that was being taken to the hospital, she was thrown out of the ambulance and hit her head on the curb and she died. And that really had quite an impact. I was very young and my brothers were, um, you know, acting like no big deal. Well, later in life, uh, I was the first one to come up on an accident where I was driving the same kind of car uh, that this had happened to, a truck lost its brake coming down the mountain and this car had had the truck was swerving and when it went around a bend and swerved it hit this volkswagen convertible the the windshield popped up and literally uh, decapitated these people and i walked up and it was terrifying it was traumatic and uh, i just I, I didn't tell anybody i just stuffed it away but that's, that's the kind of thing that can be terrifying, trauma. It can uh, go right back to childhood. But many folks have experienced things so much worse than that. I wouldn't even put them in the same classification. And this book will help you uh, understand them and love them. But hopefully this video will also. So what, what we're talking about here isn't just looking at a couple of car accidents. We're talking about sexual violence, assault, physical, emotional, sexual, any kind of abuse. Getting robbed uh, is, is such a traumatic thing for a lot of folks. Sudden death of somebody you love. Uh, maybe uh, you were, had an, a terrorist attack you or you're part of a, a terrorist attack like 9-11 or something like that. Or maybe just a natural disaster. I remember us in the middle of the night in West Texas getting up and going to the shelter because a tornado was in the area. All of these things can produce this post-traumatic stress disorder. Sometimes a person will have a flashback because something will trigger them or they'll have nightmares, certainly a lot of difficulty sleeping. They're anxious, they're irritable, or maybe they're numb and uh, they're easily startled and they have these obsessive thoughts that they can't get out of their, their head. And they can get a lot better, but it needs to be treated. And so you, sometimes you wonder, what is going on with this person? You don't know what it is. Well, it could be that they have this trauma in the past. They're experiencing symptoms of PTSD, and it's never been diagnosed. So if they go and get help, and they go and get treatment, uh, it, the outcome can be so powerful and wonderful. But um, you're really going to have to encourage them to get help. But when you see someone with this set of uh, symptoms, you really want to take some action with them. You know, um, intrusive memories is another way of saying uh, this obsessive thought. Uh, something that they don't want to deal with keeps coming back and many times they're reliving uh, that traumatic event or they're having very upsetting dreams that are kind of tapping in to that emotion. It's almost like the emotion, the trauma isn't buried dead. It's buried alive and it wants somebody to notice it. And so maybe uh, these dreams or just feeling um, emotional distress or sometimes physical symptoms, a rash comes up or something, uh, high blood pressure, but things are happening and you don't know why. And you have to ask, was there something in this person's past that was traumatic that could be triggering all these symptoms? And then, you know, avoidance is really common. They don't want to talk and they certainly don't want to talk about the event, but maybe that's exactly what they need to do. 
And, and if, if, you, if you have somebody that you love and they have a traumatic event that is not processed, they need to go to a trauma specialist. It is phenomenal the kind of help that they can get. I've had it done for me. It was pretty quick and it worked really well. And so you, you wouldn't just want them to go see a counselor of any kind. You would really want to point them toward a trauma specialist. You can find out who that is at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now, many times the person who's experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder is just totally negative in their feeling. Uh, their feelings. They, they feel hopeless. Uh, they, they just lack interest and stuff. They really get depressed because this thing that they want to get rid of, it just keeps haunting them. Or they don't even know what the thing is. They just know that they are uncomfortable on a regular basis. And so they get very, very down. Um, you know, this person, we've talked about being uh, easily startled and frightened, but they're always on guard. They're always sensing that danger might be there. Your spouse, when you're in bed, this person might have had some kind of abuse. They, maybe they don't even remember it yet. But they're always on guard with you in bed and you're blaming them or whatever. But really, it's just an untreated trauma uh, that, that's taking place. And so, you know, when you see some of these things and they start to make sense, you say, well, maybe we should go see a trauma specialist. Encourage your spouse, if it's a spouse, to see a trauma specialist. Um, maybe uh, the, the symptoms get really intense every now and then and, um, and they react um, horrifically, want to cover up, want to hide, uh, whatever, but it's not a normal reaction. Now, what we want to do is we want to get this person uh, to a doctor and we want to get the treatment started as soon as we can. Now, uh, let's talk about some things that would be helpful if you are married to somebody with this. Now, I would say also you might be dating somebody who says they have this. A big caution is what does their level of anger do while you're dating? If there is out of control anger, uh, even threats, you need, to, you need to encourage them to get treatment. And once they do, you tell them, you'll re-engage with them. You'll get back with them, but they need to get treatment first. You don't want to be enabling or thinking you're going to love this person into healing. You want to encourage them to get treatment. Okay, so here, again, with all of these problems, number one thing is no quick fix, no uh, scriptural band-aids, no uh, just get over it. You want to listen to the person. You want to hear what they're saying. You want to accept the person, the whole person that has something that is really different than you or other people. And it's a radical reaction to something in the past. And what you want to do is offer some hope. Hey, look, uh, I, um, I want to understand what's going on with you. I know I can't fully understand, but I want to understand what you're afraid of, what causes the reaction, what you think is the source of all this. And I, I just want to help you understand, and then I want to help you. Now, if you're around this person, um, they may, you, you may be a source of uh, stress for them, and they may want to blame you for the problem. Well, of course, it's not your fault. And so you're going to, as in all of these, you're going to need... Um, to get some help for yourself. Support group, it's just amazing. When, when you get in a support group and you're talking to other families who have dealt with the exact same thing, it's so encouraging. And you don't feel so bad about yourself. It really is uh, the way to go. So uh, it's not your fault. And then, you know, you want to get help for you and support, but you want to help them get help. So you look up or you call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE and we try to find for you the best help, the best trauma therapist that's available. That's what we want to do uh, for you. Because just an ordinary counselor isn't going to be good enough. So you want to help them get help. And you might volunteer to uh, go to the first session, drive them 
to the first session. Maybe they you'd sit in the waiting room. Maybe they want you to come in and just kind of be part of it. You need to be patient. This as other problem. Don't rush the person and look at how um, they are coping with things. And one time they're doing this and another time they're doing this. When you see something that is really helping them uh, get by, or you could say just get through the survival stage, when you see something that's helpful, you want to encourage them to do that. For instance, um, maybe under stress, when all this comes up, they, they have to walk and they go and walk 10 miles. Well, that would be better than stewing uh, at home and wondering, when am I ever going to get some relief? The exercise would be great. So you see them do that one time, you might want to encourage them to do it on a regular basis. So we need to be patient, look at and, and support the healthier ways that they've learned to cope. Now, the goal is for them to feel safe. They react because they're instantly brought back into the trauma and afraid. They're engulfed in fear. So the goal is safety. When they feel safe, life is pretty good. So you want to ask the person, what could I do uh, for you to start to feel safe? And then you want to try to do that. We always want to be honest with people that have the problem. We want to be honest. We don't want to argue with them. And sometimes we can encourage treatment. Sometimes we can demand treatment because it's a child of ours. We don't want to ever enable the status quo because sometimes a person with PTSD gets so desperate uh, that they become suicidal. And you don't want to get to that point. So this is a real live problem. It's not just a unique thing to them. It's a real life problem that they have. And the real life problem has a real life treatment. That's what you want to get across. It's not a sign of spiritual weakness and it's not a sign of emotional weakness. It is a slice of this person. You want to be sure that they're not defining all of who they are with this one uh, disorder because that would really be sad, because there's so much more than just this disorder. You know, if I uh, had somebody that had PTSD, I'd want to be available to them. I'd want to drop them a note every now and then that they'd get in the mail, let them know that uh, you want to encourage them and support them in any way possible. Phone calls, great. Text, emails, mail. You just want them to know they're cared for, they're loved, while you're trying to understand the exact nature of their fear and their pain. Now, as always, if you need some help, you call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. You can give that number to the person with PTSD. I tell you, I've had it. I've, had, I've, I've been traumatized by knowing where I was betrayed. Every time I went by that place, just it was a knife to my heart. I got the therapy from a trauma specialist and it really took it away. That's what I want for the person that you're trying to understand and to love. Thanks for going a little bit deeper with me into a pretty deep problem. I hope it's helpful to you. I hope you'll be of help to somebody else. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And don't forget to listen to the radio program. You can get it on Sirius XM, Satellite Radio, channel 131 at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. You can go to the website and hear it and see it there. It's on Facebook Live also. But you can go to the website, newlife.com. See you next time. And don't forget, 1-800-NEW-LIFE.